Um, so Kyle, talk to me about the Rikes, the Rock setup here. What are these guys thinking? I mean, Matt's got a big base ship to worry about, and Patrick has does not want to end up on any of those rock. I mean, Matt has got a formation flying baseless, so he wants to keep the rocks yeah, fairly you see, reasonable. You can see Matt's trying to open up some lanes here for yeah. uh, Ray for her sloop, and uh, he always wants to keep that arc on those Wookiees. So I think that, uh, and then you see that Patrick's trying to block that off here. It looks interesting that they both showed up with a mustache. They're really wanting to bring those small rocks. I mean, it really opens up the board space. You've got a formation flying list, and you've got a, a big base ship list. Oh, we've got our illustrious Marshall for the day, Mr. Devin Monkhouse, who's taking care of all the judge calls and everything else. How you doing, buddy? Doing all right. Right on. Any, uh, anybody had to throw out the door yet already today? I banned five people. He's already banned <laughs> five people, folks, and they're all Surprise, from Manitoba. I made it Holy crap. We had to give someone a round one loss. Yeah, unfortunately, we had one person had to suffer a round one loss who showed up with uh, without the necessary contents to, to play a game. Someone went to the wrong hotel. Someone accidentally went to the wrong hotel. We're not going to say who. John knew you. But, you know, that happens. And a lot of local fin. We got a lot of Ray. Yeah, a lot of fans. Yeah, right we were telling about that earlier. But yeah, um, we're gonna get you on for an interview later this afternoon. Sounds good. And uh, we'll talk about your 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 thoughts and takes on the uh, on the stream so far. We're just in round zero here, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the setup. So these guys got they got a plan. You went and talked to them before. I did. Yeah, we're gonna go over their thoughts on approach setup right now. Thanks. The, uh, the Wookiees are going to be setting up in an interesting formation. So Matt, before the match, I talked to Matt. And, uh, and, and Kyle, how would you play it if you were Wookiees against this list? Against this list? I mean, uh, I have played uh, Matt's list, and I'm setting up exactly how he is. Um, I'm, I'm really wanting to uh, almost, almost have him chase me, um, but just kite the board and uh, look out for Ray's front arc. Um, I think Matt had the same idea. Um, Sumi, if I could maybe ask you to help us out, buddy, and go find out which one is uh, which one is low, Rick. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I mean, so Matt has a ton of stress mechanics here, which is great. He's got uh, tactician on all three of them, uh, huge mitigation of damage on low, Rick, with his uh, C-3PO a reinforced combo. And Matt was telling me before the game that he's, he's very confident of a win condition if he can go into the late game with two Wookiees against Ray. Yeah, um, he's just gonna try to set up that joust and put in as much damage as he can. And yeah, it's gonna be tough to joust him, but I mean, if, if Patrick can, I mean, Patrick's clearly set up Ray in a manner that he can he can decide the approach vector and where the engagement happens. Poe is, there's the handshake, folks, we're off to the races. Um, Poe is set up in a way that he can either try and sneak around behind to the Wookiees mm -hmm. or he can just dangle and try and draw them where they don't wanna go. Yep. But it's interesting to see that Patrick has shown up to this match with every intention of being able to mitigate stress damage. He doesn't have Kanan to, to take away um, stress on white maneuvers, but he did bring the Inspiring Recruit. Yeah, the Inspiring Recruit's going to help him a lot. Yeah. I mean, if he's going to be able to use expertise before the tactician's trigger at PS3 to stress him. So that's handy, and he can keep his, his focus tokens for defense. Um, but then he'll have to do a green maneuver the following turn yes. to clear two stress tokens. So it's going to be interesting to see if, um, if Patrick can get his big guns through all this defense. That uh, yeah, It's interesting that to see up. Ray without a cannon crew, but... Spider recruit, and that's a, that's a really smart ball. move. Two points less, right? Yeah. I wonder what he's been able to fit in there for those two points. I don't know. So Poe is taking his adaptability up to PS9, Travis, if you don't mind. It's all good, folks. We're uh, we're just in round two, so we're uh, we're far more organized than we thought we'd be at this point in the day. That's for sure. Um. The. Uh, the strategic importance of flying these Wookiees in formation cannot be overstressed. If, if Matt gets into a situation where he has to split up too many of his Wookiees or they've turned and banked too much and now they're not so close to each other and Lower Rick stops being able to um, pass that reinforced token to somebody else, it's really going to start um, cascading damage into more of them and let Ray get into a position where she might be able to just pop one before it even shoots and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so. 
All right, well, um, we've got what looks like a long approach coming. We're going to have these Wookiees probably inching forward because Matt doesn't want to um, rush this engagement any longer than he would have to. Um, let's talk a little bit about our theme for, for round two then, Kyle. Traveling to play competitive X-Wing. Yeah, I mean, and anybody on the chat who's uh, somebody who travels to play X-Wing, uh, feel free to chime in, unless, of course, you're from Manitoba. Which is not downtown Canada. That's like that's that's like uptown Canada. I saw Tim uh, Ranker of Men Hilton on there. He he seems to get around a he does couple get tournaments, around, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah but um, so we decided to choose the person in the room who's traveled the farthest to be here today. That'd be Patrick from Vancouver. Yeah, Patrick's actually from Vancouver via Germany. He's he's from Germany. Um, a little town uh, that he told me, and I was embarrassed to ask him to repeat it because I couldn't, so forgive me if I butcher it here, but it was Kolog, Kolong, and um, he tells me that he's actually on his way back to Europe, and the stars just align, and he was able to stop in Toronto for our Canadian Nationals before flying over uh, into the Germany to, to attend one of the System Open Series. That's perfect, get two birds there. stoned at once. I, I, unless he's going to use us as his warm-up and just yeah. beat <laughs> us and take a few slug matches, right? <laughs> That's true. So, yeah, I mean, he's traveled the farthest to be here today, and I was asking him what it's like out there. And in the West Coast, he was telling me that uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to travel around and, um, and do it, but it's, it's worth it because of the, the, the people that you end up meeting and things like that. And, Kyle, why don't you tell us a couple of stories about your, uh, your travels? And sure. I just want to and... bring up we had a Star Slinger 72 pipe up, Tyler Tippett, and he... Uh, he definitely travels. To play. I, I hear he moves around. Uh, he moves around uh, yeah. one does or two. Well, then. he does it too. Um, Thanks for, for tuning in, Tyler. For us, uh, it's it's something that I I love playing locally. But like when you get to go out and uh, go to these big tournaments and see all these big name players and TV personalities like Tim, we got here. It's uh, it's always a great time. Hardly um, a t hardly a TV you, personality. You I have got a the face, face for radio. radio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's definitely fun so we went down to philadelphia that was a blast we were able to stay with a buddy cj traub um we stayed at his mom's place and she uh tra tra she was treating us well breakfast every morning so we were right and ready prepared for the day um we but didn't do as well as we expected but still a great time i got to see the steps where the rocky movie was formed yeah that's you know, awesome. Stallone goes up and he goes da, 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 da. <laughs> it was amazing yeah actually i uh i wiped out twisted my ankle on the right before we went into uh play the system open so i was hobbling around so afterwards um it's a little hard for me to go see some things but found a we were walking down the street i found a crutch laying on a a pole there, so I was walking around all hobbled. Well, it was the Philadelphia Marathon. That yeah, that was we busy. There. Yeah, that was busy. One of our viewers on chat just chiming in that he travels over an hour each week to go to his local game night. So, Chad, if you're uh, if you're listening in, uh, tell us how far you travel on an average basis to go play some uh, some X wing with some good. Players. We got my buddy running cat dog. That's Nick Marquis. He only travels like what, 15 minutes, Nick. Great comment from the uh, great question coming in from the YouTube channel about the benefits of having inspiring recruit on Ray. So, um, great chat about the mechanics of the meta right now. One of the prevalent um, offensive tools is stress mechanics, particularly with you know you've got Asajj, you've got Wookies, you've got R three A two droids and stuff like that. So. Um, Patrick has substituted Kanan, which would clear one stress on any maneuver on its dial, for essentially being able to jam Ray in there, take two stress tokens from the Wookiees, and then green maneuver the following turn to clear two of them. Uh, I think it has a lot to do a little bit maybe that he just doesn't have enough points for Kanan in his list because it mm -hmm. looks like he's got Poe fully loaded with what he needs and Ray pretty much fully loaded with what she needs. So rather than taking like an, an intelligence agent or, or, you know, Zeb or something, I think Inspiring Recruit's not a bad call at all. Yeah, um, it's interesting using the, uh, the swoop title and not having Kanan on there, but I think it is going to help him, especially in this matchup here, um, as long as he can keep that, out, that arc. And their dial's pretty great, let's be honest, so it shouldn't be that, that difficult. Well, Ray's got expertise as her offensive clutch, right? Yeah. She's got... Um, Focus tokens for defense off and expertise for offense, unless she comes up against a stress matchup where she's getting shut down. And if yeah. it's a start of combat stress mechanic like a Saj, mm -hmm. there's nothing you can really do. But if it's against Wookiees, she's still going to get to use expertise before 
um, before they trigger at PS3 and stress her. And that's only if she lands at range 2, but Wookiees getting big base ships into range 2 is, is easier than it sounds. So, Yeah, that should be a pretty good, great matchup, actually. It's, a, it's an interesting use of ships because, you know... <sighs> A not bad idea would people would would argue like why didn't you give Ray um, just a, a zero point crew or something like um, Nian Nyam mm-hmm. or or uh, or an intelligence agent at PS8 and then take that one point and give it to Poe and make him PS10. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know. I think uh, seeing a lot of expertise on like uh, quick draw builds and people are not taking that VI. You can almost you know, it's almost not so bad taking PS9 on Poe. Um, but aspiring recruit, like you're going to see in this matchup, it's going to help here. I don't know how well it's going to do against the rest of the field, but maybe he was preparing for these Wookiees. I don't think he looked too uh, happy when he found out what he was playing, but I think it's I think it's which be I don't right. understand. At first, I thought he had dash, and I'm like, what are you what are you worried about? You got dash, and I know he's got ray. It's like, yeah. okay, well, you got a turret, yeah. a heavy hitting turret against these Wookiees. So if you can get him behind them, uh, if you can get them into I- ideal situations, then we're going to be good. Um, so that Wookiee taking a three bank there. Looks like all three of them are reinforcing the front. Ray taking a leisurely one bank. Probably going to boost here and try and get into a better position. Um, I'd almost boost one straight and just try to get behind them a bit. I'm just thinking the exact same thing. If she can get in between those two rocks in the top left-hand corner yeah. and get behind the Wookiees, she's laughing. She might even get a range three obstructed shot on the first Our Wookiee German here. friend knows what he's doing. Yeah, oh, for sure. You ever been to Germany, bud? I haven't, no. No. Uh, I got some German in my blood. I don't know how much, but no, I've never been. You? I have never been to main. Uh, sorry, yeah, I've been to France, but no, I've never been to Germany. Always wanted to go. Yeah, it seems like per- cool preferably place. in October, if possible. It's Oktoberfest, man. Oh yeah, yeah. True. I mean, you could just go to Kitchener Waterloo, <laughs> which is <laughs> like thing, it's right? like the best Ger- it's like the best Oktoberfest outside of Germany. <laughs> but you know, what what can we do, right? Okay, so we're going into going to just see if Ray has range here. Looks three obstructed. We do have range, so we're going to get some action here, folks. Ray taking her first shot. That looks shot out of arc, so we're not going to get to add a fin die. Yeah, so we're not going to get a fin or Ray activation on this one. And we've just confirmed Lorik is number one. Thank you, guys. And we've got three hits from range three. So the Wookiee's rolling three dice with Reinforce, but Reinforce is probably not active here. No, it's active. I would say, unless Ray's not in his arc. Nope, that's nothing. No focus token on that thing. It's going to spend lower. Yeah, it's going to spend lowest token, yep. All right, takes one. Plink. That's all you can really do. Matt remembering at this moment, it's probably a good time to put some shield tokens on yeah. his cards. <laughs> Did you know that shields are handy in X-wing? I think they're. Uh, I think they're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Man. So Kyle, tell us about Salt Squadron. What do you guys have up on the docket for traveling around later this year? Uh, so May, obviously Worlds. Um, it's going to be three of us: me, Jim Harnock, and Piero. Uh, Piero Manchego Barriola. Um, Piero is in Peru right now, actually, and he just uh, found a nice little Peruvian community. There was about uh, eight or ten of them, I think, that were playing, so that's really cool. Um, that's more than we get out. We probably have uh, probably got eight or ten people that play for Salt Squadron regularly. Um, but, yeah, it was great to see that he was able to find some X-Wing out there. Um, other than that, no big tournaments. We're Our plans for this year were a bit larger than we uh that ended up happening so we were going to actually come to michigan and uh play with you guys but that uh that didn't turn out too well um but we were, we went to uh toronto regionals and yeah nothing nothing else really planned we're excited for worlds it should be a great time so my expect i expect ray to try to go really fast here she's either going to three bank in or she's just going to go a nice straight move with a with a boost she really doesn't want to be in front of those Wookiees. Auto thrusters from Poe taking no damage there. I've just sent Sumit to go snoop the room and get some uh, some feedback there on what go. we're uh, 
what we're looking at today. Poe doing Poe things, taking no damage. Could I have my blue milk? It's over there next yes. to you. Thank you. What are y'all doing for St. Patrick's Day tomorrow there, Kyle? Um, probably going home and sleeping because I just played however many hours of X-Wing. No, I'll probably, uh, you guys are hanging out tonight, I think. Where are you, where are you guys meeting up tonight? Yeah, I have a terrible plan, actually. You do? It's the worst plan ever. I'm going to cast all day six rounds of X-Wing, and then I'm going to go out with my friends, and then I'm going to get up at 6 a.m. the next day, help set up a stream, and then play six rounds of X-Wing. Yeah, see, I'm going to be sleeping, and it's going to be glorious. You're crazy. You guys are always crazy. That uh, that bus trip down to Naboo. I didn't. Even, I wasn't even on the bus, but I got pulled into the bus just to get uh, liquored up. So it was a fun time. Yeah, we were like, kind of like a, a singularity in space. Yeah. Like we have a gravitational pull. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. It was just Billy. anybody. Anybody was like, the, it's like I said when I was talking to. Um, I think I can't remember if it was Dion or, um, or one of the other guys. It was like just just there was about ten or fifteen players standing outside the convention hall. And when we rolled up and, like, 30 of us just walked single file off of it, <laughs> man, I can't wait. I'm really hoping that everybody who uh, who chimes in today talks, either reaches out to me about the bus on Facebook for Worlds because we're we're still short of getting it going. We're needing, you know, about another five, six people to make it happen. Well, A lot of it's going to depend on when the tickets go out, though. Exactly, the right, yeah. if they can get tickets later on. yeah, uh, It's going to be a great time, though. I should say so. Yeah. I know it's not gonna it's not gonna be a bad time, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> Jeez. I think Poe might have taken a shield plink there, folks. She's probably just gonna recharge at this point anyway, so Yeah. R two. Sumit, thank you for coming on back. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've noticed uh, from the room today? Sure, thanks, Tim. So uh, looking like we've got about fifty two players with us today, um, and just perusing some of the uh, lists I've seen out here, we've got a. It, it definitely seems to be favoring uh, rebels right now in the room, at least for today's cut. Uh, rebels are definitely the highest makeup of the list we're seeing today. They're, they've got quite a few very positive and effective archetypes, which is why you're probably seeing them so much. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, exactly, right. Second, uh, second to scum is up next again because wow. the high PS uh, harpoonage yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Maybe that has a smidgen to do with uh, Tristan. Come on, Tristan, Tristan, ruin it for everyone. Ruining it for everybody, bringing and um, last but not least are our beloved Imperials with. All but one of them being uh, Howard Aces today. They're the only other one is one Cairo set that we've seen. So it's very interesting. That and no Howard here to appreciate <laughs> it. Yet. Maybe tomorrow. Oh, they'll, be, they'll both be here. They better both be here. One of them owes me a bloody play mat. <laughs> no, yeah, I think good. they said they were driving up today. We got some, yeah, we got some definitely some strong American talent in the room. And, uh, and it looks like some of their boys back home and from all over the, uh, the, the home of the free and the... Uh, Land of the Brave and whatever it is, uh, are, are chiming in <laughs> and watching. But uh, it's good. We, uh, we're, we're happy to bring some exciting content this weekend. 52 players today, and I'm told as well that we are at max capacity uh, tomorrow. There's already a waiting list starting for, for day uh, 1B tomorrow. Apparently only 52 people are degenerates and could only get work off. Um, <laughs> going. But it's, it's the Friday of the St. Patrick's Day Law weekend. And man. then I, I'm here. I take the day off. I'm not even playing. I just came to hang out with you guys. That's, thanks, man. Yeah. We appreciate you coming out, bud. <laughs> No, I mean, when I was lining up some folks to uh, to sit down, I was like, oh, who am I going to get to go round two? I guess I'll bring Kyle. I guess <laughs> Kyle will be there. And then, like, I was like, oh, I need somebody for round one. And I'm like, Sumi, you get up at, like, 5 a.m., don't you? <laughs> He's like, no. Okay, well, this is going to be a good turn, folks, so let's try and think what we're going to do. Um, I think it's fair to say that, that Wookiee 2 is probably going to take a, a two-left turn or a three-left turn. Two or three, and the others, I would I assume, if, are going to turn in. I wonder if Wookiee 3 is going to be able to get into the action this turn. I don't know. Wookiee 3 is going to be pretty far out of it. And if he does his three bank, where the heck's is Lorik going to go? Hmm. Ray probably going to want to do, I reckon, just a one forward, maybe a boost. If he does a bank, he's probably going to hit that rock. See, I was thinking of just getting Ray out of there as quick as he can, just try to get her behind the Wookiees. I know that's a difficult thing to do with that 180 arc, but if your number two turns in, your uh, other Wookiees can follow and just, they don't care. They'll, they'll chase. Well, well, hashtag fun fact. If you are a big base ship and there is a rock in your firing arc, if you bank, you will hit it. Play that back for me, Tim. Let's hear that. If you're a big base ship yep. and there's a, a rock in your firing arc like that and you bank, you're going to hit it. No matter what bank. Interesting. Thank you for that. It's just like a VCX, folks. Um, if you're a VCX, one of the things that most VCX players will do when they start a round is they'll put a rock at three and three in a corner. You ever wonder why they do that? 
because a 5K with a big base ship on the end of it is exactly the length of a range three ruler. All these people so playing 3D know, chess, and I'm know, here playing uh, it's 3D checkers. chess, man. Exactly, it is yeah. Uh, a range three ruler is a 5K, so that they know if their 5K will fit to the board edge. Smart. Well, I used to play two VCXs no, on I my saw that. list, and it's, it, it was the first thing I did. I'd bring a debris cloud, and i put it at 3 and 3, so I'd know if my uh, K is going to fit. I'm not saying I'm flying one tomorrow, but I might keep that in mind just in case. Well, I'm going to put a bounty on you, you <laughs> ghost fan playing so-and-so. It's all right. Uh, Duncan said he was going to give me a, a cock knock if I was flying it, so i got to watch out for that first. It's capital of Bangkok <laughs> or capital of Thailand. There you go. Well, it'll be interesting to see what some of the other guys come up with from down. You know, there's been a lot of talk about Ghost Fen, but, um, you know, you take the math from re uh, regionals in Michigan, for example. Sure, a, a Ghost Fen won Mich Michigan regionals, but to be fair, it, it was being flown by Eric Z, and, you know, it's a killer. it was, there were two tremendously talented uh, VCX Fen players in the cut. Eric Z was one of them. We had uh, Mark Grauberg from the Rook Squadron as well who's definitely no slouch, definitely a great player. And both of them, like Eric Z won by the skin of his teeth, yep. two matches in a row, once against Zach Matthews and once against um, uh, Tristan Singleton in the finals. Ray doing a great four forward boost here to get around the back of this list. Who called that? Really just going to start uh, opening up into um, trying to get behind the outside of those Wookiees arcs. Yeah, that's great because your front Wookiee has to has to do a turn here, and the other ones might turn behind him. But Ray is either going to joust you, or she's going to continue to plank away from doing a three bank boost or something like that. So it's a good position. That's what I would have done. It's going to be interesting to see if Lowrick is out of range um, to take a shot on Ray. But I mean, we're definitely getting no uh, Lowrick reinforce uh, bonus this turn because Lowrick took a bump on that yep. run. So. Uh, I think Poe is probably going to be able to bail. Poe has recharged the shield he lost last turn with a two forward. And the question is, is he going to try and boost right and try and make the Wookiees have to split up? Or is he going to try and bank left? We should make where the Wookiees go next turn pretty easy, I reckon. I think uh, Patrick wanted to use Poe as bait, and it almost looks like it's working. Um, if Matthew's going to continue to follow Poe, Ray's going to end up doing some damage. Well, Patrick told me that he plays out of his home store in Vancouver at a store called Ages 3 and Up, and was telling me that um, Wookiees is not a matchup that he loves, but it's one that he's had before. So that's going to be interesting to see if he's going to be able to uh, to beat his, his nemesis in this one. We're getting a range 3 out of arc shot here. We're getting some action. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if that's obstructed quarter to corner. And they're going to call for a judge. Okay, no problem. This is what judges are for. From our perspective, it looks fairly unobstructed. Yeah, I would say that's no. So, yeah, they're going to agree it's not. I can hear them in my ear. That's what I was thinking. He, I would argue front. that the Wookiee's back left Ooh. corner is closer because the Wookiee's on an angle like that. So I think they call it right. Ray dropping hit double crit. Ray rolling hot. And Sumit, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, there we go. He remembers. I asked him. Make sure you put the dice tower in there for me. Two shields coming off Lorik there. You better some of those crits could hit Hull, but that's not how this game works. <laughs> so Ray's going to take two shots here. So we know that the Wookiee's going to get to shoot back. Interesting, though. They were very close to out of range. I wonder if the firing The arc. front arc might be out. No, they've got it. Predator to the one. One hit? Not Buckus. Yeah. That's right, because Lorik has Predator, and the other two have Expertise. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. It's the, it's the right call. So Patrick just taking no damage at this point, and Wookiee number two going to take a pot shot at Poe. Three versus three with auto thrusters in focus here. Expertise for two. I'd be very surprised if Poe takes damage here. Anything can happen. But it won't. Yep, <laughs> auto thrusters for three. Poe doing Poe things. Poe doing Poe things. Uh, Beyond being a points bunker, man, he is it's still incredibly hard to hit. Oh, he's a killer, yeah. Were you there with Jim Harnock and the rest of them at the Black Knight Games Store Championship? No, I was... Uh, this year? Where was I? I don't know. I wasn't there, but I heard all about it. The Soul Squadron Boys came up, and I remember Devin played uh, a Dash Poe. Sorry, no, he played a Han Poe, and he had... 
four TLT tie aggressors, and he shot at Poe a lot <laughs> with TLTs. Yeah, he and can do okay. A lot. He can do okay. <laughs> TLTs. <laughs> So if you met, I, I, I would probably argue that you guys from Salt Squadron have met more communities abroad or talked to more of these guys. I see you sponsoring Dion's stream every chance you get and, and that kind of stuff. Tell us a little bit about the, um, the, the impressions that some of the other communities have made on you and your friends from Salt Squadron when you guys travel. It's definitely welcoming communities. Um, just talking to everybody on Facebook and whatnot, it's... It's nice going to these tournaments and, and catching up with them um, or even like meeting them. Um, they, yeah, we're, I, I think it's more me. I'm putting a lot of, a lot of effort out there to uh, try to reach out to, to, to strong players, to people I know that are flying the same list or the same types of lists that I, I try and I try to get some tips from them. So um, just d doing that and talking to everybody, it's been, a, it's been really cool. Meet a lot of people. Well, it's true. I mean, I mean, like I remember when we saw um, when we saw each other in Philadelphia. That was probably the most the most strangers I've yep. played with, if I want to say, when we were all there, because we were we we're definitely the odd men out. We had yep. your, your caravan that went down. There were seven of us in the PTL van, and uh, yeah, we had five. We, uh, all of us had a rough start, though. Jeez, I got I got pants to round one, hundred nothing in I think like you, uh, I think you minutes. turned it around there, though, didn't you, Tim? I turned it around, but man, I, I thought it was over. Yeah. Seriously, round one, I saw this guy in Minefield Mapper uh, Rebel Nim with four proximity mines. Jeez. He built himself this little fortress of proximity mines in the middle of the map Here, come that get his me. dash doesn't trigger. Oh, no. Because it's Rebel Nim. Yeah, so he dashes like on a rock, and then he's on a prox mine. He's like, yeah, that one doesn't blow up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, come on. I felt, I felt like a kid on a playground and the bully's like holding you from arm's <laughs> length and you're trying to swing at him. Players, 45 minutes remain in the round. X-Men players, 45 minutes remain in the round. So yeah, we have 45 Thank minutes you, Devin. Here. We got a lot of X-Men to play still. Well, we've reached the midway point of this match, essentially. We're coming up, well, in a few minutes. So let's uh, uh, just do a little bit of a recap of where we're at. So the Canadian Nationals today, guys, we're streaming from the Sheridan Center in downtown Toronto, right across the street from Toronto City Hall. Um, so if you're, you know, ever familiar with the layout, it's a, it's a beautiful part of our city. Uh, we're going to be playing six rounds of Swiss today, followed by a progression cut on Sunday. So all the four and twos are going to make it to the progression cut on Sunday, and it's going to be a very interesting way that the the matchups work on Sunday. I mean, math would tell you that if you're a four and two going into a progression cut, followed by uh, a top eight, that your chances of making the cut are very low. But typically, when you get two sets of four and two merged together after two days of Swiss, a lot of really interesting matchups can happen based on points in MOV, et cetera. So you get that chance to play the upset. Yeah, exactly. There's going to be a lot of bubble matches yeah. for the last few rounds. There's going to be a lot of heartbreak. Guys who've done either really well. Yep who end up knocking guys who've done less A few well table out. flips. Yeah, I think there might be a couple table flips yeah. in day two. Yeah. That'll be like six, eight rounds of X-Wing in. <laughs> All right, so we got, Ray, we got Ray, Wookie number two here doing a hard left bend. I expect the others to follow suit. Yeah. And number three, trying to do a three here. I wonder what Lorik's probably going to do. Oh. Okay, so Patrick's got his finger Lorik on that will mustache. likely just one bank and try to stay close, and then he can try to loop around. Um, that two bank's definitely going to hit. Yeah. Oh, that two turn will definitely hit. Was he on it? No. No, he's not on that rock, folks. That is tremendously close, though. That is the width of a hair. Just two straights with Lorik. Keep that uh, reinforce in play. Lorik putting himself into a support position. Going to be able to pass his reinforce token to one of those Wookiees that comes under fire. Just going to reinforce the rear. Ray's probably taking some stress this turn. If Ray goes a one bank to her ship left. Should definitely be in range two. Almost no way to get out of it. And probably take two shots from two Wookiees and a stress token. Not be able to flip. That's like a three bank? Yep. Patrick taking his three. If he boosts, he'll probably get out of range of, of, of Wookiee two. But he's almost... Oh, that's so close to range. You reckon that's range two there, Kyle? For yeah, it's hard to see from the stream, but... That is uh, from, you know what, I think that's range three. From where she was before and where the Wookiee shot from before. 
Patrick's not taking any chances. He yeah. wants to get as far away from uh, from number two as possible. He has all here. the time to do it too. He can. I mean, he's, his game plan is working for him. He, another three bank boost the following turn, and he's going to be able to keep the pressure up on Lorik. And it'll be interesting to see if Matt falls for Patrick's trap here and breaks away and tries and goes after Poe. Yeah. Because we remember at the beginning of the game, this was exactly what Patrick was talking about. His strategy is to try and dangle Poe, yep. distract him, and try and get him to uh, sacrifice his range control and try and uh, in evade those tacticians as much as possible. Well, it's interesting where he, uh, Matthew has his Wookiees right now. If, uh, depending, has Poe moved already? I beg your pardon? Has Poe moved already? No. No? Um, so, I mean, he doesn't have much room to go. I so he did his two forward, actually, yeah. Yeah, so if, uh, if Matthew does take the bait, he, he's going to want to turn lower again and keep him with his Wookiees. Other than that, if he doesn't, he's going to two-turn towards where Ray is and maybe even turn the other way with Lorik. Low yeah, you don't get his ability very much, but you're going to be able to get some shots on Ray, and then you're chasing her. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who Ray shoots here. I think that's what Patrick's decided. He's deciding for an action for Poe. That's what it is. Deciding if Poe wants to boost or not, or just take a pot shot from number two. Yeah, because if he boosts, he opens up his dial a bit more. Um, if he doesn't, he can even go the other way. Yeah, he is deciding to take that boost there. I mean, it does open up your dial. It definitely puts you in a situation where you're not going to be able to avoid Tactician the yep. following turn, but you're hard-pressed to do something else. But again, I think that's what Patrick wants. Yeah. He wants him to go after Poe, so he's doing well. He's doing well so far. Let's see how it turns out after combat here. We've got uh, only a couple of plinks off of a couple of the Wookiees at this point. So I think he's shooting low rig obstructed here. Looks like it's going to be range three obstructed from Ray on Lorik. Lorik did reinforce the rear, so he's going to get to add that evade result. Out of arc, no Finn Ray. Yep, so there. Um, Lorik didn't roll any evade results there, folks, so it's just the reinforced mitigating one, which is another shield off of Lorik. So uh, Matt's going to decide who's going to shoot. Looks like it's going to be range three back at Ray. Ray and the Wookiee look parallel. Ooh, that's pretty close on that one. Yep. Yeah, he's, did he not 3PO? I didn't hear him 3PO on that one. Yeah, I think that would be uh, a little bit of stream nerves there. I'm just going to ask Sumit to run over to the table and check uh, the damage, uh, that we have the damage line correctly. I want to find out if he's forgetting to see 3 po Such yeah. a good runner. Well, Sumit and I are going to be sharing the load today. There he's going to be uh, on with our guest in round three coming up, which is Scott Ross from the London area. Oh, Scott, awesome. Scotty Ross, he's here, man, yeah. So we've already talked a little bit about um, that, and we're going to get into something else for Okay, so Devin's just in there right now deciding or not whether the ships are parallel because, Kyle, would you remind us of the parallel rule? Closest point to closest point. So if uh, if it's parallel, you measure directly to the parallel point. So it's not corner to corner, it's point to point. So definitely have the right damage count and Ray taking a shield. First damage on Patrick's side this time. Well, first permanent damage. Poe's taking some hits, but he recharges. <laughs> This Poe is totally barren, fair balanced. <laughs> <laughs> and then Merc, that's got to be Paulos and Salt Merc. That's our boy from Minnesota. Minnesota. And for all of our Canadian viewers, just to remind everybody, Minnesota is not a real place. It's, <laughs> it's made up. It's made up from the Mighty Ducks movie, as we all know. Three hits from the Wookiee. Looks like Ray's taking two shields there. Okay, so we're going to go back to the planning phase here. Um, and Patrick's going to have to decide what his approach vectors looks like trying to get after Ray. They did get the judge call in there and ruled at range two. So Ray took a stress token from Tactician, which is definitely very relevant because now she cannot do that three bank swoop and keep that. Uh, no, I was going to say the three bank boost. Oh. She can't do that anymore to keep the pressure up on low. She's yeah. going to do a one bank, which is. Definitely not ideal because if 
Um, if Matt two turns both those rookies, that's, you're in trouble. That's double stressed Ray, and then she's in big trouble. And I mean, it's going to let Poe get on the six in that situation, but there's no guarantee that Poe's going to take a hard three. These are my salts. Look at, did Kyle make the cut at Rochester Regional? No, Nick. No. Did you win Rochester Regional? Did you lose the Allen on final table? I think you did. Okay, well, just as a reminder to all of our chat uh, guests, we can see uh, you guys chatting away in the chat. And unfortunately, when the videos hit the live stream or they get posted up on YouTube afterward, your salty trolley comments will not be posted. <laughs> so, so we will choose... We, you are in the driver's chair, Kyle. Okay. You are in charge <laughs> so ignore them. of I which salty trolley guys you want to tell you. They can all see each other chatting right now while they're live, <laughs> though, so it's all good. So what do you think? Are you lower going to try and bail? I would. Um, kind of have to. I mean, Lorik's already lost his shields. So, I mean, if, if Matt loses Lorik in this lineup, the other two can still do work. But Lorik is really the the linchpin for keeping the damage mitigation going, right? If you shoot at him, you're dealing with C-3PO, which is a guaranteed evade. If you're shooting at one of the other ones, it's Lorik's reinforced, which is a guaranteed evade. So it's kind of doomed if you do, doomed if I you don't. I think putting right? that stress on Ray changes Matt's mind here. Um, I would I would turn them in. I would turn the Wookiees in towards Ray and just keep push, putting the pressure on. Um, but he does have that option to three-turn Lorik here and get his Wookiees close to Poe. So really what you want to do. He could he could even use that stress as a deterrent. She's not going as fast as she wants to, so get those Wookiees after Poe and start chasing. That's a good point, man. I mean, I, I I definitely agree with the two players when they were talking to me at the beginning of the game about what their strategies were. It's funny because both of them kind of are trying to do the same thing, but against each other at the same time. Yeah. So <laughs> I, they don't know that they have the same strategy, but I think they're going to end up in the late game the way they both want and let the, God, the, the, the luck of the Irish decide. <laughs> Praying to, the, praying to the dice gods, man. Seamus O'Galahad may make more than one appearance this weekend. <laughs> he oh. just keeps popping out of nowhere. <laughs> ah, tiddly tea potatoes. <laughs> this weird game with all the dice. <laughs> I play a game like that back in Cork, but usually there's money involved. <laughs> if you lose, you have to give yourself a pint, and the men who you're playing a pint. That's a really good accent there. I, couldn't, I, don't, I don't think I pulled that off. I can do many accents. I'm not surprised. No. You look like a man of many accents. That's true. <laughs> it's tough sometimes because when you're uh, when, when you're trying to do impressions, sometimes like your 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 Indian accent will come off as like Russian or vice versa, <laughs> right? I try to do from Minnesota or, if, or it's from Chicago. Yeah. Those are the hardest ones. Yeah. Ones from Chicago. Chicago. If you've ever met anybody from Chicago, the way that they say the name of our city, Toronto, is just Toronto. the best thing ever. <laughs> there are those guys up in Toronto. <laughs> I don't know. Gus888, thank you for chiming in today. Uh, Gus888 thinks that uh, you can chance the Wookiees going after Poe, but it's probably a good he call. would keep Poe at range three. Poe at range three is very distracting, I would agree with you, but it's really tough because... Poe dancing at range three, eventually Mark's going to get the message that Poe is a little bitch and doesn't want to play, yep. and he's just going to you know, get right in there. I'm so curious as to whether Patrick is reading Mark's mail. If, if Patrick re reads Matt's mail here and makes the right call, gets Poe in there to start beaming away, because the, the ideal way to engage a Wookiee is from both sides, because yeah. he has to reinforce one side so somebody's getting that's a good point great shots right so if if patrick plays this turn correctly he might end up in uh, far more ahead uh than he wants to be because if that wiki three does a two turn to its ship left raise one turn boost to probably get it out of arc might get it out of arc we'll find out two straights are green on that Two straights are green on the Falcon, one's banks, and I believe three straight? No. Two straight boost, no. you're at range three. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a really tough call here for both players. They're take, definitely taking their time with the planning phase. Didn't want to travel all the way from uh, from Vancouver That's true. Get snubbed That's true. in the second round. Although to be fair though, I was talking to Patrick about so both our players are one and oh. I was talking to Patrick about his round one matchup. His round one matchup was against John Doyle 
who is a little bit of a local celebrity here, folks. He's a legend. He's a legend because this is a human being who is the nicest guy you'll ever meet, who also happens to be, unfortunately, visually impaired, and yet is also an amazing X-Wing player. He's a killer. That's right. I have learned he that first He sits at the tournament table with a friend who helps him paint the picture in his mind of what is going on the table and plays you an X-Wing and, and beats you. Beats you. <laughs> Patrick beat him on the last die roll of the game. Yeah, Patrick had Poe against two M aces left. John had him in a, at a lucky roll. Could have happened to anybody. I personally have been beaten like I stole something playing John. And he's just the nicest guy in the most yeah. exciting game when you're yeah, playing. Yeah, he's great. Watching somebody play you when you know they can't see the table. They What's so impressive? I, I go on. I'm trying to play. I'm trying to think of my strategy. Try to think of where I'm supposed to be. Try to keep that all in my mind. So he has to know where the ships are, where his opponent's ships are, where the rocks are. Then think about his strategy. Then think about all the dice statistics and whatnot. It's crazy. Yeah. So I mean, when you, when he's playing you and and. I've seen him, his helper, like, so he'll ask him, like, put my finger, hover my finger over where my ship is, hover my finger over where your ship is, and tell me which way it's it's pointing. Yep. And then he does the rest. Yep. He just extrapolates the distances in your mind, and then somebody does a quick range measure, and he rolls it himself. The, the dice are, all, all FFG dice are inherently in Braille anyway, so <laughs> it's, it's just handy. Yeah. And uh, it's something amazing to see when you see it. And yeah, Patrick played him round one. And then his reward for, for beating a guy who can't see and plays X-Wing is to play three Wookiees. Yeah. Kar Karma's a bitch, On folks. Stream. <laughs> the Scott Ross. The Scott He's Ross, in London, Ontario, in the house. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Just a room full of gentlemen and slingers today. Oh, yeah. So um, both our players taking a very good amount of time just to check on what they wanted to do here. I think Patrick knows that this could be the round that sl swings the game one way or another, positionally wise. If uh, if Poe Spence gets killing wants, me, yeah, it is killing me too. Okay, so the Wookies are going to move first as soon as Matt's ready. Look, looks like Matt's ready to go. Thirty minutes remain in the round. Thirty minutes remain in the round. There it is. It's going for Poe. Yeah, it was a very, very long planning phase this, uh, this, this, this round, guys, just because of the importance of, uh, of, where, uh, of where they are in the board. And the thing about Wookiees is they're terribly tough to turn around. So you, you take the middle, like, um, like Matt did, and you get the best way to fan your arcs out. The bad news is, is that if you guess wrong and you go after the wrong piece, mm -hmm and it gets away from you, you're just gonna take tons of pot shots while you try to get your ships taken around. Yeah, unfortunately, I think, I mean, we're, we're gonna see, but going after Paul might might not be the right choice here. So I three bank coming see, from yeah. number three. I always like pop and Poe if I can, but oh, I popping, him, that popping him's easier than said, easier said than done. Looks All right. like he might've just squeaked in. That fits. I'm calling. Uh, too. He might be just trying to stress out Bo here. It's an interesting thing here because Matt said to himself, "If I can get one or even better two stress tokens on Poe, Lorik's going to be in a position to come around and follow up shots the next turn if he does manage to dodge two of those uh, bank from those Wookies here. Ray going to be in a tough position to keep um, keep up. I guess if she one bank boosts." As she yep. did do the one. So she's going to be able to boost into range three of Lorik. But with C3PO and Reinforce, he's not putting a lot of damage through on him. If he remembers. If he remembers this time. So if she boosts, she'll get her Finn re rolls. And she's got expertise. And it looks like she's taking no return shots this turn. So I think it's safe to say that Ray is exactly where she wants to be. Yeah, it's exactly, exactly where I would want to be with her. Well, talk me through this, Kyle. If you're uh, if you're um, Matt, why did you why did you do these uh, Wookies the way you did them? I think he is thinking about just trying to stress out Poe. He's going to take a two range two shots at Poe right here, double stress. Then next turn he's going to he's going to two turn and he has him again. So it's difficult. Um, he they, he might try to boost Poe out and try to get out of range two, but. Um, the the low rick move is a little confusing to me. Get him. He's a little too far out of the game right now. Ray is on your tail all game. You're, he's going to take you out. Um, so it's a hard one, but 
I think I would have turned in with the Wookiees, um, but to chase Poe, double stress them is also a nice little icing on the cake. I definitely agree with uh, with Death Re- Death Revived 1991 um, about prime thrusters and, and the benefit of it in the meta right now. I've uh, I asked it was the first question when I heard that uh, Patrick had Poe. Do you have prime thrusters? He's like, no, it's the advanced optic one. I'm like, bold strategy, Cotton. Yeah. We'll see if it works out for yeah. him. Patrick just having a quick chat with his opponent. They've been very cordial to each other. I can hear them on the table mic, which is nice. We, nothing worse than coming to an opponent and then get ma- matched up against some dickhead from Niagara Falls and or then something. you got to sit there for, with him for an hour and 15 minutes, <laughs> like <laughs> salty pricks. <laughs> Patrick deciding if he wants to boost here. He's, he's de- competing him because if he boosts one bank to sh- pose ship left, he's definitely taking two stress tokens but he'll have a chance to three forward boost the next turn. Or do you stay put and three forward boost from there? Personally, I would take the boost and three forward bank, uh, sorry, three forward the following turn. You have a better chance of keeping the Wookiees away. But remember that he's he's purposefully trying to distract two of the Wookiees with Poe, to dance with Poe, keep Poe out of the fight so that Ray could go after Lorik. So he's probably thinking to himself, can my Poe take two or three or four rounds of lumps from these Wookiees. I think the answer is yes there. <laughs> I mean, he's got the he's got the advanced optics eyeball. Uh, if he gets into a situation where he has to spend it, he's in a big trouble. So there's the boost. Yeah. Running Cat Dog from the, uh, the Twitch stream saying he needs his Nationals rematch against Kyle Thompson here. Well, if you're playing tomorrow, you'll get your chance. Uh, how many of the Spell Squadron boys are playing tomorrow? Oh, sorry, we got some action here. Looks like Ray taking a range three. Finray re reroll into four hits on Lorik there. 3PO. C3PO calls nothing. He's deciding not to take his range bonus here because it's range two. It is range two. Okay, yeah. So we see 3PO zero reinforce two damage. Two hull into Lorik. Ray keeping the pressure up. Yeah, she's doing what she needs to do. That's the... Number two going to shoot first. Oh, is that it range is one? It is range one. No stress. Excellent call on Patrick's part there. Very smart. I'll take a lump, but I won't take a second stress Very token. Very smart. It's two hits. Yep, they're counting that one. Expertise to two. Poe doing Poe things. Matt Chuck calling, come on! I know exactly how that feels shooting at Poe sometimes. 100% range two, so uh, Poe can take a stress from Tactician. And I think we've rolled too many dice there. Yeah, that's one too many. Uh, two damage going through on a Poe there. No, we're going to do everything we can not to break the fourth wall here, guys, unless it's a, unless it's a massive game state uh, issue there. I had a conversation with the marshals and the judges ahead of the time, and unless it's one of those situations where it's the game one way or the other, we're going to respect the fourth wall. Okay. So Poe able to recharge next turn, going to take net one shield damage there. to be able to three forward and probably maintain his distance. Wookiees two and three can't turn around to stress Ray, so Ray's going to get a chance to keep the pressure up on Lorik. Lowick probably going to try and bank to his left as yes. far as possible, get back into formation with his buddies. I mean, three can three hard right here and put some pressure on Ray. If two, if Wookie number two, two hards, try and go around the far rock and catch Ray as well, and Ray goes too fast, too far, too aggressively to chase Lowick. Matt may actually set up a lovely little trap in the Kill corner box. for Ray because Ray doesn't recharge. <laughs> That's true. If you'll excuse oh, me, man. I actually just have to have a go quick chat with our uh, with our head judge here about a question for round three. I'm just going to ask Sabit to sit in with me, Kyle, and uh, and you guys just keep on going. Okay? Thanks, Tim. Tagged in by the coach. B team is on. What's happening? Now? <laughs> Hello, buddy. How are you feeling about this turn? Hmm. It's a hard one. I'm real. 
I'm really upset about Lorik. Lorik's too far out. Um, He's not where he wants to be. I'm actually really surprised he didn't do the two turn in last turn to yes. keep that formation going and bring his 180 arc. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. Um, you, I gotta think though too. If you're Matt, you're really unhappy with the way that last turn went. Absolutely. To do, to do only two damage on the pole. Yep. That was. That's gotta be something they're frustrated by. I think Poe's doing exactly what Tim was talking about. That three straight boost, get out of there. Absolutely. You, why would you not? You yep. regen the one shield, get recharge your, your optics. You maybe get a late range three. You're laughing with the three dice and the auto thrusters. That's exactly where he wants to leave. Yep. And uh, I remember the chat was saying earlier that and you guys were saying about not being too aggressive with Ray. I think, what, two bank, play it safe, and then just see where Lorik goes. Yep. That way you don't have to boost if he does a range one. And Good if he call. goes fast, you do boost. Good call. Because I think he's going to want to try to stay in range two if he can on that Lorik to take away that range bonus. Because it's, it's tough playing against my share of Wookiees. You don't want to give them the third die when they have three PO. That's yeah. it's a bit frustrating. Well, the second, I guess, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it's brutal. I played this list at uh, Philadelphia actually, and I, I think I got a little unlucky on matchups, but mm -hmm. um, it's it can do some damage and it just takes hits. Yeah, it really can. Even just one of them alone with and also as you were saying, you don't like where Low Rick is. Him not being able to use his ability to pass over that uh, token is yeah. also sometimes going to become a problem as well. I mean, the other Wookiees are not even getting shot, so yeah. um, I, I guess it's not a big deal here, but... Well, you got to assume that Wookiee number two is going to do the hard two to ship left. Yep. The hard three from Wookiee number three is not going to fit, I don't think, if you do do a hard two, so mm. uh, oh, oh, turn it the other way. Bringing everybody back up, realizing, Matt probably correctly realizing that he took his chance. Yep. Chasing after Poe with slower ships makes no sense. He's yep. got regen. He needs to put all of his three arcs onto Ray and burn her down in two turns. Good call. Yeah, I think so. I agree with him entirely. Smart three choice. Three turn from three? Yep. Oh, I like that. So it definitely, to me, is looking like... I feel like Matt's had a couple of reps, reps with this list because he's flying it very intelligently, very methodically, and, and he's really capitalizing on the Wookiees the way that are designed. So I think, I think that's personally yep. that's what it looks like. I had almost one straight with uh, lower here, hope for a bump or something, and uh, then two turn next turn, oh, three. Agreed, M -M -M -N Merck. Definitely he's got to get points on the board wherever he can, and, and Ray is the easiest one to extract points from. Unfortunately, however, he is going to be driving into her front arc where she is at her strongest. What he's saying here is chase me, but you're going to get hit. Oh, so one straight coming from Ray. So I think you don't boost here. You don't want to get in range no. of any tacticians. It also opens up your one turn next turn like, with a boost. Yeah. And, uh... So he obviously wants to keep the pressure on Lorik. The question is, does he go boost knowing that his... Actually, you know what? His expertise won't trigger until later in the match. Yeah, the tactician doesn't goes, turn it off. So Maybe he goes for the boost to get the range one. That's five dice with Finn. The reroll. I don't know. I mean, I might gamble it. He's got the inspiring recruits to clear both of them next he turn. He does, yes. Which means he can't slew. We haven't seen that in play yet, but that's a good call. Interesting. Okay. I think that's the problem when you're playing against Wookiees. Well, not problem, but that's the, the mindset and the gameplay attitude you have to have as you go into things. Because of that 180-degree arc with the tactician, it... Even though I've been playing the game for a couple of years, it still takes me aback when I came across Wookiee's a tactician. The, the range that that covers is massive. Yeah, it's not fun. So there it is. That's one boost. I mean, I don't mind it. I think that gets him range one on Lorik's rear. And yeah, exactly as you guys go. Oh, only the two. Interesting. Do you think maybe Pat might have thought that that's exactly what uh, Matthew's going to do? So he decided to keep Ray, uh, sorry, uh, Poe as close as possible? It'd be smart. You could come into the fight now, just turn in, boost in. So the the chat's saying that they think that it's an uh, evade title, and the uh, Ray has evaded multiple times. So that might that might be something that we're missing. So to be honest with you, when I initially saw the list, I actually thought that's exactly what the title he would have had because the inspiring recruit. It is the evade title. It is the okay, evade title. So there you okay. go. So he's decided to just go. There oh, it is. Fah. There it is. That's that Ray. So it's 3PO for one. She is definitely using the force. Yeah, and I guess Patrick's list makes a lot more sense to me now, the fact that that is the uh, original uh, Falcon title, because he's decided to fly Ray entirely like an ace, an arced ace, which is amazing, um, because then you can get a five-dice arced ace if you do that. Direct hit. He's not happy about that. I wouldn't be happy about that either. 
So he rolled zero for the three PO. Takes the one with the one. That's low. That should get. That's yeah. There he goes. So that was animations looking great. Shouts to VTTV with that amazing overlay. That's awesome. So she's going to eat one stress, which is actually perfectly acceptable considering she wants to one forward next turn anyways and smash somebody else in the face. Uh, Patrick's in a really good position right now, I think. So I guess the two dice from uh, Ray's arc. Yeah. Two hits. Oh, a little nudge on Poe. Finn. He's going to add the blank. And re rolls. For one. For one hit. Only takes one for all that? Yep. Wow. And add a, add a tactician range on that one. They're just talking about how Poe has been moved. Uh, has he been bumped? Yeah, he was bumped from his uh, wristband. Okay. Yeah, he did do a two straight yes. and then a boost, yeah. so... And he was arced last time. That makes more sense. So, uh, I, oh, I get this. That's the point. Did he roll uh, four dice on his Wookiee Liberator on that last shot? I guess we weren't paying attention to it. No, we, we weren't. Because we, he actually rolled he, it off we, camera. Yeah, we can't see Because it. if he did roll four and that was range one, he couldn't possibly be stressed. It's the second time he's done that. Yeah. yeah. So that's definitely range three in arc. So he'll definitely get the two dice. Ray's ability comes into play again here. So he yep. gets the extra dice with the rerolls. Yeah. He's got a lot of dice in his hand. Yeah. That... Double check that. Only three there now? Three hits. Double blanks. Takes two hits. One shield, one haul. Ray. One shield, one haul. Excellent players. Excellent players. 15 minutes left in the round. 15 minutes left. Remember, if you have not filled out your address on the iPad that is going around, you will not get prizes. So fill out your address in the iPad. During lunch, after lunch, during the next three games. All right, guys. 15 minutes left in the round. Okay. Okay. Yeah, running cat dog. I agree with you. Ray going one straight. I, I think he doesn't care if he gets blocked. Actually, I think would prefer he would prefer a block on this one because yeah. he doesn't have to worry about taking another tactician stress, and then he can shoot with impunity on Bookie two, who can't hard two or three without hitting that rock. So he's gonna have to go straight, um, unless he does something bold. With the YT thirteen hundred. I forgot the dial. Is there a green three forward or no? It's white. I'm not sure. Check. I'm gonna check just to remember. One and two is green. Let me see. Let me see if I can bring that up. <laughs> Only a two straight, one banks, and one straight or green. So no oh, three okay, green. Thanks, MN Merck. Thanks, Paul. Okay, so... So then what do you do in your, if you're in this situation, if you're Matthew? I really want to get Poe in there. Poe's, uh, although to regen you have to bank, I want to get Poe shooting. Um, you do want to set up that block and take as much damage in on it too as you can. Did Poe not re regen a shield last turn? He did go green forward. Yeah, he should have. Yeah. He should have regen a shield. We should double check the board state. Uh, can you check the shield status on the game if you don't mind? On Poe? On Poe or on Poe? On Poe specifically. He can afford to uh, he can afford to turn in then and boost get a shot off. Now do you do something spicy here if you're Matthew with the Wookiee? Do you bank it ship left number three to maybe not block Ray and get a shot range one shot on her? Because he's got to get some damage out there. He really does. He has to do something to to get back in the game here. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. It's that giant 180 arc. Sometimes it's it's usually almost always a blessing, but in this situation, how do you 
get it on her without bumping. Well, we're going to see what he yeah, figured out. Bank. Yeah, that one definitely makes sense to me. That's a good choice. Oh, that makes sense. So he did regen last turn. Thank you. So we reinforce the front. He's doing a one bank oh, with number three. He's going to go for the block. Yep. I don't know. Um, unfortunately, you're behind Ray after that. Interesting. Two forward from Ray. Yeah, which is actually going to be... Oh, yeah, exactly. It's going to be fine. That's going to be fine for Patrick, I think. He would like the evade if he could get it, but only taking one shot. Still going to have expertise on your attack. It's not the worst. And there you go, yeah. I, mean, I think a boost coming. Yeah. But why not, right? You've got the you've got the focus on the optics. Why would you do anything but the boost? Hmm. Now the question is, do you bank boost left with... The, okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm assuming he wants to put both his shots, and anytime you can get an unreinforced shot on a Wookiee is a good time. Good call. I don't know if he's going to get there with that, though. It's going to be a stretch. Yeah, so Ray will take that range. We're gonna check range two. Three we should definitely check. Definitely. An, oh, we're checking for Poe, obviously, yeah. Uh, hit crit. It takes them both. It takes them both, thanks. Ooh. Well, the reinforce should block one. No, it's in the front. Oh, that's right. That was the whole reason why he banked left. Yep. It's like I already forgot what I said. So that is range so two. Range so he's two. gonna get the tactician. Reinforce comes into play here. Yep. Oof! At a blank. Reroll. That's there it is. For four. There you go. There's super Ray being super. Matthew is not happy. <laughs> no app required to roll four hits. Even three three hits. hits. Reinforce takes the one. Three hits. So he's going to take that crit for sure. And the crit does go through. He got weapons failure for the crit. Ooh. That's not a good one to get. <laughs> Matthew is uh, talking about how he has amazing crits and uh, Patrick's saying he's got the right ones at the right moments, yeah. which is definitely true. Absolutely. He has been getting the right crits at the right time. And oh, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Patrick doing that boost bank has also dodged the, sh the other shot from the additional yeah. Wookiee. It's very smart. Yeah. And I think the chat was saying it's going to set Poe up for a really good turn next turn. He could do, the, he could do a one bank, get two bank. He's in great shape. It's number two shooting Ray here. Two hits. And then Oof, add the blank. Thin. Oh, doesn't even need the rerolls. Oh. Sometimes, I, sometimes those German dice they must yeah. be uh, weighted a little bit differently. <laughs> it, they're, they're precise. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. Right? The German precision. Very well precise. engineered. Engineered by Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so a little bit, a little bit behind the eight ball here for Matthew. Now, I mean, he can still pull this out. He needs what is he? What is he short on Ray now for half points? Two, two or three. One away. One, one away. Right? One away. Is it? I'm bad at math. <laughs> really bad at math. <laughs> I tried counting all the dots and I forgot it anyway. <laughs> Uh, Poe did not regen that turn. He did a hard two left. He's out. Yeah. He'll probably regen this time with a one bank white, I would assume. Sorry, a green one bank from Poe. There's no reason to go fast. He'll happily take those range three pot shots where auto thrusters are in his favor. Yeah, Matthew's going to want to pick it up here, try to get those damage in on Ray. I don't know how much of a... If you can really win this game, but get mm. the points when you can. Does a hard three from the Wookiee number three clear Ray's base? Yep. I believe it should. Yep. That puts him in a nice spicy spot for his tactician. Especially if Pogo's, if Pogo's slow, but he does have that boost. So, A one bank regen to boost to get number two, a shot mm -hmm. on number two. If that three bank, he will uh, not get a shot. Mm -hmm. One bank Ray, you think, to the right? Ship right? I almost think about uh, I almost think about staying right where I am. Shoot the one forward, hope block, you get a bump. Block Ray, try to block Ray at least. Oh, and, I uh, see, yeah. Take another shot with two, although you do want to get that other shot off, so...
I mean, time is definitely against Matthew in this situation now, having only eight minutes left in the round. Uh, eight minutes is, unless some extraordinarily extraordinary dice swingage happens, it's not going to be enough to get Paul. Which makes this rebel archetype so strong is that you know you have that continual regen ability with Poe and the fact that he's a nice forty point locker. Uh, if Patrick can get out of this without losing half on his ray, he's going to be very very pleased with this result. Uh, I don't think he can, but who knows? Or do you go fast with your ray? Yeah, go for straight. Again? Or go, go for straight boost. Just get out of there. Like yeah. He, well, he is stressed, so that's going to make him a little bit more problematic. <laughs> What's the chatter on the table right now? Not much. Oh, no? no. Quiet? Yeah, it's very, very quiet. Planning. It's thought process? It's very quiet. Yeah, it's tough, right? It's uh, it's one of those situations where you, you travel for events and, and you, you really enjoy the game, but sometimes you have to try to find a way to find a, find a positive outcome in a situation, even if it's stacked against you. It's yes. not easy. Uh, but you can always have a chance. You never know when a bad call, might, your opponent might put themselves on a rock, they might put themselves in a disadvantage and advantageous situation, you might get double range ones, you never know. So it's always important to kind of keep your head in the game because you never know where it might end up taking you. I'm speaking more to myself now. As somebody <laughs> I was just who, thinking that as somebody who very continually good advice decides that I need to, to take. Yeah, as someone who loves to continuously just check out and tilt and say, well, I've, I've lost the game, I'm quitting X-Wing, forget this. Uh, it, you never know. Which is also interesting. I really did like early on in the mid in the mid game, and I really did like what Matthew was doing with the way he he went after that bow. Uh, I know you were saying you would have turned in with the bow there with the hard two. Yes, uh, it did work out for him anyway. So, yep. but your boy Jim Harnock scored in the late game with uh, Paul and Fen left alive against the Kylo. Should be an interesting one. Should that should be an interesting match. Speaking of traveling, uh, Jim's opponent had also traveled in from Detroit, I believe. Jesse, great guy, played him up in. Mandalore or at no no I have played him at Syracuse I think. two turn for number two puts me in a good position no matter where Poe goes yep. that's, uh, yeah that's as a reminder the, we'll, we'll talk about the progression cut in round three a little bit but, um, it is confirmed that it's uh, MLB confirmed MLB preserved pool four and twos uh, for day two so we I'll let you guys wrap up sure absolutely Okay, also just as a note to the viewers, we will have a lunch break after this round, and we will be back at 2 p.m. Okay, which is about to be announced by the judge. Just a reminder, number two has uh, weapons disabled. Oh, so that's right, which is whether he's probably trying to fish a range one shot if he can to at least try to counteract that. Um, so now we'll see if he did a range one and stay where he is, if he's going to do a hard two. So I guess the people are chatter saying that going all in on the Poe is it's kind of like going in all all in on Miranda. You got to commit when you know you can kill them in one or two turns. Yes. Otherwise, there's literally no point in attacking them. Hundred percent agree. And and that was the problem with the two ships. He might have put him behind the eight ball where he could have chased and then killed him, but by getting that damage, it's it's one of those things where it's tough. It is difficult. So as you were saying, four forward, keep the stress. So range one at three. I think three reinforced the front. Um, or no, sorry, the back. Thinking that Ray might not be there. Oh, okay. But not 100%. Now, it's just a sidebar to anybody who's watching this who maybe hasn't played against the Wookiees before, doesn't know them. The general rule of thumb with their very interesting and, and intricate arc is if they can shoot you, you're in their front arc. If they can't shoot you, you can fire at their rear. That's basically the long and short of how that works. So if you're curious on reinforcing and this, that, and the other, if you're flying an arc dodging ship or a ship that can barrel roll effectively, like a, like a Star Viper, um, if you're out of its ability to fire at you, you can fire on its potentially unreinforced arc. Just a little sidebar if you're curious as flying against these Wookiees. Cause they're great ships, and you're going to continue to see them. Target lock. So, so no... Okay, and then Poe's ability, or do you spend it? Spend it, Poe. Do you spend it? Spend it for damage? That one is a damage one, correct? No, yeah, it's not. He's got to reinforce on the front, so he's not killing him this round. But. Right. That's true. 
He's already taken. No, he's decided to he's use spent that already. So he's just oh, he's just, it he's just deliberating whether or not he wants to take the focus action to do the damage or not. Hmm. So you say you spend it then? You go for max. Oh, there you go. Max aggression. It's full health. I mean, he. You're right. You actually get a good call. He has the damage to lose. He's in no danger of. So that he looks. He, like he finally one. gets an evade, and he gets his reinforce his direction. So. It's an interesting question. It's an interesting question with that Poe. Do you spend or do you keep? I mean, you you want to go for the damage, but as you were saying, he's not behind the eight ball on his damage curve at all right now. He could kind of afford that Poe. attack. He's got it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, I think that's why I don't like the flying Poe. Not good with aces. But yeah, especially aces that only have two evade dice yes. if they're not at range three. And not all the token stacks in the world. However, intensity Poe with BB-8 feels a lot like you're flying against... A defender and Sunafel mixed in one. It's yeah. really annoying. <laughs> so here comes a range one shot into into Ray. This time we should actually see. Probably. Oh, Ray, Ray taking her range one shot. No Ray ability, but expertise will change it to three hits. What's the uh, what's the conversation right now? So they're talking about reinforce. Um, ah. He reinforced the back, but he is in his front firing arc, so he does not get reinforced here. So he takes all three. Three. All three shields? Yeah, so he, there's just confusion about the reinforce. Uh, oh, okay. Three go through. They're just talking about how reinforce works. Right. Do they need judge call? I, don't know. I mean, that's their choice if they want to call it. If they don't understand it, they can work it out themselves as players. He's he, they're not arguing him. Matthew's just saying that it should be closest point to closest point. He understands what the rule is, but mm. he wishes it another way. Absolutely. Four dice Oh, array. finally Matthew gets to see some dice going his way. Oh, Got goodness. Two. That precision engineering. So that's half on Ray. Yeah. I mean, in all fairness, Matthew's going to come out of this game preserving quite a substantial amount of uh, of MLV. He could. Uh, they got time for one more round. I think that's what Matthew's asking about. If he could get around in, they're calling it. They're going to call it. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? That's calling it as in as he. I I almost would have just put my dials down. You, I wouldn't have given up if Patrick. You want to kill that Wookie? I was going to say if I was Patrick too. I mean, he's being pretty casual. I guess. Is definitely